Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. It is good, Lord, to be here today. Um, it's wonderful to be back in our beautiful sanctuary, but I have to say you feel very far away from me today, so you're going to have to sing twice as loud. Uh, what a beautiful thing to hear the organ and the piano together in those duets. Uh, it makes our hearts just lift with praise to Christ alone today. I invite you to say and remember and to study the verse that is our verse for the year. And please say it with me. It's on the front of your bulletin. So then, a Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God. Hebrews 4, 9. It is Transfiguration Sunday, and we honor this especially high mountain moment with the procession in with all of the torches and the cross. So as we stand today and face the forward cross as we do our confessions, you will turn to the cross and follow it through when we are singing our hymn. So please stand as we confess our sins together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, and wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have, we have not, not always recognized the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit dwelling, dwelling in each of us. Remember, remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore, restore us, that, that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. And by the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen. Please face the cross as we sing, love divine, all love excelling.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. please join me in our prayer of the day. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading today is from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? 
And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Word of God, word of life. A responsive reading from Psalm chapter 50, verses 1 through 6. The mighty one, Lord God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Our second reading is from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. I invite the children down. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Do I have any basketball players up here? Ah, oh, good. So can you show me what it looks like to pivot when you're in basketball? You plant one foot, right? So one foot is planted strong. Uh, I never played basketball, so forgive me if I do it wrong and there's no hope <laughs> okay, that I will get it right. Okay, so I'm gonna plant uh, this and I can pivot this way. And as long as I keep my one foot planted, I'm not gonna get called to be out or doing anything wrong, am I right? Okay, well, you know, everything relates back to Jesus, everything in your whole life. Today, we celebrate what is called Transfiguration Sunday. And uh, I'm gonna tell you all the whole story in the sermon, and it's a really good story, but it's a pivot moment. Okay, so we have been in Epiphany, and that was when the altar was green. I talked about that last week. Uh, and it was about revealing who Jesus is, uh, the light that just keeps revealing Jesus. Well, today we're going to pivot on this side, and we're going to see the light shining through Jesus onto us, and we're going to walk the walk of Lent and see who we are to Jesus. 
Jesus is going to tell us the greatest story that you'll ever, ever, ever want. And we do this in the church. First, we follow God's word. Then we follow the scripture. And then we do traditions. And so today is traditions. Um, so today is Transfiguration Sunday. And do you notice the big word that's all around you? What is it? Hallelujah, and you better say it like a million times over because you're not going to get to say it for, uh, until Easter morning. Okay, so uh, do you know the song? Allelu, 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 allelujah. Anybody? Praise ye the Lord. <laughs> I guess I need to do some teaching here in that Sunday school month. Okay, uh, alleluia is uh, when we say alleluia, are you happy? Yes. And we have a lot of alleluias in the church. We are always happy because we are God's beloved people. So the tradition is, so we understand a little bit more of what we're living through, because every, every year we go through the life of Jesus Christ in the church. That's why every Sunday tells a different story of how Jesus lived on earth and what it means to us. And we keep doing this, this um, uh, story over and over. So for the next six weeks, we're going to bury the Alleluia. Now, I think it was you that buried it really well, and I couldn't find it until August. So I'm not sure I'm going to let you be the one that hides it. <laughs> uh, but we're going to bury the Alleluia. Tuesday, here at the church, we're celebrating Shrove Tuesday. And that means this is where we're going to burn the palms from last year that we carried in and we make them into ashes. So Wednesday night you will come and be marked with the ashes of the palms that we carried in. And then you're going to stuff yourself with everything that's left over in the kitchen. And that's why it's become pancakes, because uh, it's oil and, and flour and all that stuff. And uh, Lauren, I think you, we have a huge pancake bar that you can just fill all that, because on Wednesday it starts Lent. And it's a time that we get closer to Jesus, to think about that, where we try to empty ourselves of things that would distract us of, ease, of, of Jesus. So we're going to fold this Alleluia up, and we're going to, everybody grab a hold of it. Okay, you, may, you have to make it fit into this little gold thing right here. Keep folding it. Oh, good. Well, that looks good. And then on Easter morning, we get to say Alleluia again. Why do we get to say Alleluia again on Easter morning? I don't think it's going to fit. You're going to have to keep folding. <laughs> Even more. Oh, yep, you can make it. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> might need some help here. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we can crunch this, right, Lauren? <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> Looks like my laundry room. You guys could come and help me out anytime. <laughs> All right, we have it in here. Any volunteers on who would like to hide it? You have to hide it somewhere in the sanctuary and we don't, you'll have to do it after service today. We don't know what, we don't want to know where you hit it because we'll keep looking. Anybody want to take that responsibility? <laughs> oh, be kind, Aubrey. Oh, maybe you two can share it together. All right. So there and talk to Aubrey. She has the greatest hiding spots ever. Let's pray. Good and gracious God. We thank you for the walk to the cross. May our hearts be filled with you and empty of ourselves so that on that Easter morning we will say Alleluia. <laughs> Amen. All right, you've got work to do. <laughs> Please stand for the gospel acclamation, and it is the Alleluia, so you'll want to sing it strong. Gospel.
according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Before my God, fall on my knees and rise. 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, the Creator, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the one who stirs and sustains us. Amen. I love the scripture of the Transfiguration. It was the first sermon I got to preach, and I truly fell in love with it because I love the words, it's good, Lord, to be here. Peter says that on the mountaintop. And it's good, Lord, to be here. Every Sunday when we get together, it's good, Lord, to be here. The Transfiguration, it's put right in the middle of the church calendar year of Epiphany to Lent. And it is so very important to the life of the Christian to understand all these important events that, that we purposely take you through every Sunday so that you can have a better understanding, a, a closer walk with Jesus as we go through our lives. You know, Advent, we were waiting for the light to come. And on Christmas morning, the angels delivered that news, right? They're in a manger. That's where peace is. It's right here on earth to you. And then the stars shine. And we've talked about this all through the, the January months of how Jesus is revealing his identity. And people are starting to see that he is the Messiah. They had hoped for this for so long. They didn't want to be disappointed, and Jesus is not exactly what they expected to happen. You know, when you think of a ruler, you're thinking of someone that's just going to come in and announce it. But the difference is Jesus involves us to understanding who the identity of the Lord and Savior is, so that we can have a connection. So the epiphany light brought us baptism and water and life and that beautiful light. And then we turn and Lent is going to bring us the body and the blood that we celebrate in the sacrament of the bread and the cup. It is going to give us that darkness but how the light of our baptism shines through us so we have the opportunity to walk with Jesus to the cross and to the resurrection so that we have been given life eternal. This is a big deal. It's a really big deal. And if you understand the walk to the cross in the last three days of Jesus Christ's life, you will understand how important it is to our lives because it changes everything for you. It changes everything in the matter of love. And so that's why I love to tell the story. It is in this moment today that we get to put them all together. And I love how it all works. So let me just tell you about Mark. Right before the gospel I read today, the disciples are gathered around Jesus. And a lot of people are really wondering, who is this Jesus? And Jesus says to all 12, who do, you, who do the people say that I am? And you know, these are the moments that you just have to picture what it would be like to be in Jesus' classroom. The disciples are always out in the open, in the air, or in someone's home. It's a very close relationship, and Jesus is forming their faith. Everything Jesus is doing is so that the disciples will be able to tell the story. And so he asked them this question. Jesus already knows. Who do they say that I am? And so the disciples, well, that's easy. I can always tell you about what other people think. We're good at that, aren't we? <laughs> what do other people say about this? Oh, they think you're a prophet. Maybe even Elijah, the guy who was just taken up in a whirlwind that we just read about, maybe that's who you are. And then Jesus asked the big question. And he asked that to you today. Who do you say that I am? Who 
do you say that I am? And can you imagine how quiet it got among the disciples? Who was going to be brave enough to say it? And this is why we fall in love with Peter. I imagine he might have gotten a few nudges and everybody's staring at him. And Peter says, and I'm sure he took a breath, you are the Messiah. Have you said that? Can you imagine saying that to Jesus? You are the Messiah. Everybody around heard that. And Jesus was so happy. Yes, they got it. They're seen. So Jesus goes on to shape their, for their faith and he tells them, I will be betrayed. I will be rejected. I will suffer. I will die. I will be crucified. But on the third day, I'll rise. That's just too much. <laughs> that was just way too much for them. They didn't want that to happen because they loved Jesus. Their lives were so much better when Jesus was right with them. And now he's saying he's going to go through all of that. And of course, Peter goes, no, no, Jesus, we don't want that to happen to you. And Jesus looks at Peter. And he says it so strongly that it would have been a moment of harshness, I would imagine, for Peter when Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. That is where we love to fill ourselves up with what we want. And Jesus loves us so much that he fills us up with what we need. That's grace. That was what just happened there. And Jesus knew it was going to take a lot for them to go through that time when he is dying on the cross and those three days when no one knows what's really happening. And even 2,000 years ago, we're still wondering to this day how to explain it. Because sometimes you just can't explain it. It's a mystery. It's what we believe. And so Jesus takes three witnesses and that's really important in the hebrew tradition that you have witnesses and so he takes peter james and john and he goes to the high mountain that's in the the text it's the high mountain and we all know what mountaintops are for that's when god is revealed they're tired and the other gospels tell us that it was probably during night that this all happened they were asleep the the witnesses the peter james and john and they awake. And what do they see? They see this light. It's like Jesus had swallowed the sun. The clothes were dazzling white, whiter than you could even imagine. Your eyes would hurt to look at them. And he's talking to Moses and Elijah. Now, Mark doesn't tell us what he's talking about, but the other gospels say that they're talking about the departure. Can you only imagine if that was you, Peter, James, and John, and they're seeing this, you wake up and you see something so unbelievably bright and people that had died or gone away, Moses and Elijah never actually died, they were just taken up. And this is who Jesus is talking to, the law and the prophets. And a lot of people love to, trans or to talk about what all of that means, and we just truly don't know. But I like to think that Jesus loves us so much, that was the glimpse of what the resurrection is. We just get to see a little glimpse, and he's preparing our, for our faith formation. And so Peter feels like he needs to say something, and he goes, It's good, Lord, to be here. Let us build three dwellings for you so that you can stay here, Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. And then all of a sudden a cloud comes around them and brings them all together and the voice of God is speaking. Are you there? Are you ready to hear God's voice and the words that God says? This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Three words, listen to him. And then it all disappears and only Jesus is there. 
It's good, Lord, to be here. Listen to him. All of that should bring all of that Torah tradition that all of the people on that mountain knew so well of God in the mountain, the voice that spoke to Moses, of the light, the clouds. All of it is faith forming. And for us to remember that's who we are. This is the Jesus that calls you the beloved. And you just got called that this morning. And you'll be reminded of that at the end of the service. You are God's beloved. And then they go down the mountain. And Jesus knows that nobody else is ready to hear this story. But if you were Peter, James, and John, would you want to tell somebody? They were changed forever. We're changed forever. So what does it mean to us here at Good Hope? And it is so wonderful, the timing of all of this, as we worshiped in the auditorium and we moved back into our sanctuary. It's good, Lord, to be here. And next Sunday, we are going to celebrate this place. Right before every funeral service, I get to say, we are gathered with the people of God who believe heaven overlaps earth. That's who we are. That's what we believe. We believe we are God's people gathered here where heaven overlaps earth, and we have decorated our lives with that. So we remember, because remembering is big. Remembering who you are and the values you have. The gifts that you have shared for this church are the memorials of loved ones, honorariums of things that have happened in your life. Places where, and I shared this at my church I, at Emmanuel, where I grew up, I got to preach there for their 150th anniversary, and I reminded them that I really never got to see the altar when my five children were little because I had the orneriest little boys uh, that were ever born, and they would snap the garter of the man's sock in front of them. And it was just a matter of time to just living through the worship service, but I was there. You see, you're here. And you have stories that happen in your pews. You have stories about the people that you are gathered with today. And they have formed your faith. And you are part of this. You are part of the walls. You are part of this community. You are part of God on that mountaintop because the stories keep going. You are the Peter, James, and John. You are the witnesses. And God is our God, and God's going to do what God's going to do, and he's going to take us to the cross with him. And he is going to prepare this place that we can live forever and ever because... He loves us, not because we've done anything to deserve it. This is the one Lord, the one faith. This is where we are. This is where we gather. It is the one who was and is and ever shall be, who taught us that was way back in the Old Testament, is in Jesus in the New Testament, and they always were and always will be forever and ever. It's good, Lord, to be here. Amen. <laughs>
And let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessings on the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church that the transformational power of God enters the hearts of all people. May its leaders serve as examples of your grace and healing across time and space. We pray for the creation that will be that we will humbly observe the swirl of wind and the heat of the bright sun. Teach us to honor all you have made and care for the animals, plants, air, and bodies of water of this planet. We pray for those charged with leadership, lawmaking, and governance of our towns, states, and countries, that they will strive for goodness and justice all the days of their lives and callings. We pray for anyone any who are sick and suffering, especially Marge Bodnot, Heidi Walton, Keith Young, Bruce Sloan, Eric Sparks, Sydney, Brad Bradford, Charles, Nyla, Sean McDiffitt, Kathy Cole, Connie Long, Todd Redman, Ray Fankhauser, Richard Seckel, Joni Teben, Ernie and Maggie Fisher. Guide us to offer hospitality, shelter, friendship, and care to any in need. We pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the transforming beauty and love of God in ways that honor the dignity of all whom we encounter. Trusting that all the saints, prophets, and those who die in faith are held in your care, we remember in thanksgiving those who have died. Grant us your gift of salvation as we await your coming again in glory. And gracious Lord, we give thanksgiving for the birth of Atticus Lincoln Saunders, grandson of Dan and Beth Zucker. Bless him, bless his family, and thank you for this new life in our world. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace of the Lord.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed write our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who sharing our life lived among us to reveal your glory and love that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see.
Please stand and hold the person's hand next to you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep your hearts and minds in his grace. Amen. Amen. Giver of every great gift, Christ's body is our food and we are Christ's body. Raise us to light by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated for this very special announcement. Uh, we have a person we need to thank. And so Mary Scott, we would like you to come forward. Now Mary Scott, for years, am I thinking over 20 years, had decorated this church with uh, her heart and soul and with her beautiful faith because she could tell you a story about each decoration. And so the Music and Worship Committee and the Good Hope Lutheran family would like to present you with a gift and a, a thank you as you turn this ministry over to us. Uh, because I just have to say, I'm in, the, in here every week and Mary Scott is in here almost every day. Um, she had a way of just wanting to share the story of Jesus with all of the things she put out uh, for us to enjoy. And we will certainly miss you. Uh, so I have a prayer for you, and I invite you to join me in prayer. God, God of unity and peace, you give each of us grace through the gifts of Christ. We give you thanks for Mary, through whom you equipped with talents and a heart of service and giving of her time to share with us. Through the Holy Spirit, you empowered Mary to, to share and tell the story of your son, Jesus Christ, so that our faith would grow. We thank you, Lord, for these servants. Amen. And I think it's only fitting that we give her a round of applause and thanks. Thank you, Mary. Now, I do have some really important announcements um, along with all of these. Uh, this Wednesday begins Lent, Ash Wednesday. So in the parking lot, we are giving Holy Communion and also the imposition of ashes. It is open to everyone in our community, all churches. Sometimes people uh, have busy lives, and we want to make sure that they are always welcome. So our parking lot is a worship space at 12 o'clock. Please come. And you're also invited to come if you want to uh, be marked with those ashes before you come to our 7 o'clock service here on Ash Wednesday where we will have the imposition of ashes. It is a beautiful service of confession. So we invite you to that. And then every Wednesday following, we will be in the auditorium at 6 o'clock to 6.30, just the way we always did our Advent services. And our theme is Walking with Jesus. And you will be sitting, hopefully, in old Jerusalem to experience that. Tuesday night, though, don't miss the fun. It's uh, the history of Mardi Gras, so it's not always in New Orleans. It's right here in the churches. It has a very spiritual meaning. Uh, so uh, we have pancakes. We are burning the palms. And we would love for you to come and enjoy that, 6 o'clock. And uh, next Sunday, I really ask for you to come to experience this uh, wonderful rededication of where we gather in God's love. Bishop Daniel Bowden will be uh, giving the message that day. Uh, there, there will be activities where you all will be asked to participate in, even if it's just waving a little, um, a little ribbon of all the ministries that we have. It's an exciting time for Good Hope. So please make it to the 8.30 or 10.45, and the bishop will be giving a presentation at 10 o'clock in the chapel that morning. So I have to ask you to stand for these because you're going to need a lot of air and energy. Uh, this is a week of birthdays. So get ready to remember these names. Sherry Seckel, <laughs> Valerie Shaw, uh, Herb Jones comes to late service, but I think everybody knows Herb Jones. Um, and so these are Sherry, Valerie, and Herb. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sherry and Valerie and Herb. Happy birthday. God who names you
Christ who claims you and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. People of Good Hope, we, we are grounded in faith, gathered in love, and sent with the purpose so that others may gain the kingdom. And we solemnly take the alleluias out of the sanctuary until we bring them back in on Easter morning. Go in peace, you are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.